Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Today we celebrate the vigil of the great feast of the Holy Body and Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist called Corpus Christi. Uh, we acknowledge this great gift, the source and summit of the Catholic faith. It is Jesus' presence among us that we celebrate every Mass, but more particularly on this feast day, which helps us to focus on this wonderful gift of Jesus Christ himself. To prepare for this encounter with the risen Lord, as we do at every Mass, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his pardon and his peace. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I am a great sin in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my fault, to my fault, to my fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary, your virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Give us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
proclaim the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first feast day, of, on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. The Feast of Corpus Christi, we celebrate this weekend, also known as the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, is a liturgical solemnity celebrating the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. I begin this homily with a prayer for so those bow our heads. God our Father, for your glory and for our salvation, you appointed Jesus Christ eternal high priest. May the people be gained for you by his blood come to share in the power of his cross and resurrection by celebrating his memorial in this Eucharist. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Amen. A little history about this feast day. <clears throat> the Feast of Corpus Christi originated in 1246. I don't think any of us were living at that time. Um, a bishop, Robert de Tarot, bishop of Lange, ordered the festival celebrated in his diocese. He was persuaded to initiate this feast by St. Juliana, prioress of uh, Mount Cornelian. These things are foreign to us, but this is part of the history. Uh, she experienced a vision. By the 15th century, it became one of the principal feasts of the church, with the procession of the Blessed Sacrament being one of its most prominent features. We will be having this procession tomorrow at 11.45 circle around this church and also in the neighborhood, nearby neighborhood. St. Alphonsus Liguori wrote, Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament consoles a soul far beyond what the world can offer. A holy hour of adoration will give you more strength during life and more consolation at the hour of your death and entrance into eternity. Spending time before the Eucharist is one of the best means of growing spiritually and cultivating a deep relationship with Jesus. The Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen wrote, Neither theological knowledge nor social action is enough to keep us in love with Christ unless both are preceded by a personal encounter with Him in adoration. Makes me think of the song, I think the Everly Brothers did it. No, 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 do you know it? Is to the love, sing it. No, 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 no,
this practice to all of you, Eucharistic adoration, whether here on Wednesday nights or at St. Mary's in Pensacola, who have perpetual adoration. So whether in good times or in bad times, this practice must be done. This upcoming week, June 6th, we can remember the anniversary of a very important historical event, June 6, 1941. You know what it is? Yeah. All right, you know, we're studying it now. This past week, a very important historical event occurred. Whether we see President Trump's trial and final verdict in New York as the result of a gathering of competent attorneys, jurors, and judges, doing their job, or whether we see this as a pig circus of injustice and a threat to our nation's judicial system and democracy, we need to ask ourselves as Americans, are we a nation that honors God and can say, as the Israelites told Moses in today's first reading, all that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Are we that kind of a nation? I answer this important question, and to answer this most important question, we must explore the answers to two other questions. Question one, what is it that the Lord has commanded us to do? And question two, are we doing all that he said? May you and I rejoice in the Lord as we study salvation history and realize that we have a God who loves us we have a God who loves us to the point of shedding his blood for us for the forgiveness of our sins. Because life is in the blood. The shed blood of animals offered up to God symbolized the intimacy of the covenant that God made with humanity. A covenant is an agreement or an understanding between two parties. A covenant with God is a promise that leads towards loving intimacy, a loving intimacy between creator and creature, between God and the soul that each man and woman receives in the womb of our mothers at the moment of our conception. The soul, from this moment on, is meant to live eternally in God's love and mercy, beginning with this life on earth and into the next. It was by the Holy Spirit that Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And in this way, the holy body and blood of Christ, as both high priest and victim, could be offered up, unblemished to God, Jesus being the mediator of a new covenant. As a priest today in the Catholic Church, I just sigh with relief that I'm not a priest of the Old Covenant. All the killing of animals and the blood, what a mess. <laughs> Much easier to be a priest today. But it's not about being easy or not. The fact is, God is God. We must give Him honor and glory. In our second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, St. Paul makes the correlation between the sign of the Old Covenant and the sign of the New Covenant. With the Old Covenant, through Moses, the Ten Commandments and many other directives were considered all that the Lord told the Israelites to do. The high priest at that time entered into the Holy of Holy sanctuaries after the blood of goats and calves were shed, so that the sins of the people of Israel could be cleansed by this act of atonement and the high priest who represented God's chosen people. In the New Covenant, Jesus Christ is both priest and victim, entering the Holy of Holies of Heaven, not with the blood of the goats and calves, but with his own body and blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption to cleanse our consciences from sin and from dead works in order to worship the living God. This sacrifice of Christ takes place in an unbloodied manner in every holy sacrifice of the Mass, where Jesus' body and blood become present for us under the appearances of bread and wine, which we receive 
as sacred food for our spiritual journey in this life. Through the priesthood of Jesus Christ, we are called to do this in remembrance of Him. All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. And hopefully, we're excited about doing these things. Having gone to Mass repeatedly as often as we do, sometimes we may actually, actually, I hate to say it, get bored. <laughs> Why is this Mass going on longer than an hour? Are you going to do that? Are we going to do that when we go to heaven? We can look at our watch and say, I've been here for an hour. I think it's time to go. Over. Sometimes we get bored. Insanity. Craziness. Out of touch with reality. We understand whose presence we are in. We're not bored. We're excited. Today's feast day of Corpus Christi and the Eucharistic procession will take place at 1145 tomorrow around the church in the neighborhood is our public declaration that all that the Lord has said, we will do. As Americans, we can say we are a nation that honors God or can be. As Americans, can we say we are a nation that honors God? Can we say that all that the Lord has said, we will even do? In all honesty, we are far, far from this goal. Also, there are many new people in America striving to be compliant to all that the Lord commands us to do. Although there are these people, almost half of us wish to shed the innocent blood of our children before they are born. Psalm 50. This is for those who want to think this is the right to do. God says to the wicked, How can you recite my commandments and take my covenant on your lips? You who despise my law and throw my words to the winds. And because of this apostasy and this, this, this blasphemy, terrible things are happening to the flesh, and because of this and other blasphemies against God committed in this land, our courts oppose the righteous, and justice is nowhere to be found. Truth stumbles in the streets. And honesty has been outlawed. Yes, truth is God, and anyone who renounces evil is attacked. Where did these last few words come from? Come from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 59, verses 14 through 16. Well done, America. Looks like we're here. This is the America. It's not the America that our beloved. Men and women who gave their lives for our nation fought for, we remembered that on Memorial Day. This is not the America that they fought for. Although this is the America that some people want us to go and to stay in. As Americans, are we a nation that honors God or not? The Lord looked, Isaiah said, and was displeased to find that there was no justice. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. Those of us honoring God in the spirit of adoration and thanksgiving for the holy body and blood of Christ, who dwells among us until the end of the age in the Eucharist, are pleading with the Lord to step in and save us with his strong arm, so that justice and holiness may be the law of a land truly seeking to be one nation under God. As Americans, seeking to be one nation under God, we have come a long way since July 4th, 1776, to today. Yet, as we see our nation being dismantled before our very eyes, where courtrooms and trials resemble pig services of injustice, God is with those who honor and glorify his name, this Corpus Christi Sunday and always. You and I are the remnant, striving to heed and do all that the Lord has said. And may we always be this way.
himself for us, Jesus bound us to the Father in the new and everlasting covenant. As we renew the covenant by offering the same sacrifice of his body and blood, let us intercede through him for the needs of others. For the church offering this sacrifice of adoration, that all members may be strengthened for priestly work in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our nation, that the sacrifice to you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we receive the bread we are with you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Yes. Spiritual drink. Yes. 
the Lord in my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and your will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O oh Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. In Christ our Lord. so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond and charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we play. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation and prayer world advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and William our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion and merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in your passing from this life, to kind admittance to your kingdom, here we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world, all to the Spirit. Through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever in heaven.
follow the Lamb of God. He told him to take the way the sins of the world. Blessed those who come to the supper of the Lamb. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight to all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is fashioned, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements, and I'd like to bring up Alejandro Judah to give us some information about the upcoming Vacation Bible School program. Bible School this year will be July 8th to the 12th. 